I had a request to do some exercises for internal hip rotation. Now one thing that might be missed in a lot of anatomical descriptions is that the hip rotators, the muscles that you can use your, to rotate your hips while standing, are actually the long thigh muscles. So you have the semi, the tensor fascia lati, and gluteus max superficial fibers, which both attach to the IT band, which attaches to the top mm -hmm. of the tibia. You have the biceps femoris long head, which attaches from the sitting bone, the top of the fibula. Well, on the inside of the thigh, you have the sartorius, which attaches to the inside of the tibia. You have gracilis, so sartorius attaches to the ASIC, so, um, the point of your hip. The gracilis attaches to the sitting bone to the inside of the knee, and then you have semi tendinosis, which attaches from the sitting bone to the inside of the knee. So, hip, uh, point of the hip, pubic bone, sitting bone. So, three muscles attaching from those three points of the hip bone to the inside of the tibia. On the outside, you have the tensor fat, um, you also have muscles attaching to the hip crest, front of the hip crest and the back of the hip crest to attach to the tibia, but also from the sitting bone attaching to the fibula. Now all of those muscles are important because they attach to, let's say, call them corner points of the hip bone. So the ASIC, the pubic bone, the sitting bone, and the PSIC. All those are corner points of the pelvis and you think if you're trying to control anything, um, trying to control rotation or, or what have you. It's a little bit easier if you focus on the corner point to get a little bit more leverage. So one important idea though is that all of those muscles attach between the hip bone and the lower leg bone. So if you want good rotational control while standing, one idea is to make your foot and shin stable. So if you can stabilize your foot and your lower leg, you can then make it easier to use those muscles to turn the hips, to turn the pelvis relative to the thigh, to, to practice external rotation and internal rotation. Now another point about rotation, if you, there's an idea, so one idea with muscle control is that you need to stabilize one end of the muscle and you do that by, in this case, by stabilizing the shin and foot, making the shin rotationally stable. So rather than the shin and foot collapsing inwards or going like that, you stabilize your shin and foot so that they can't move or move as little as possible. That gives all of those muscles a stable foundation from which to work on the hip bone. Now another idea with muscle control is that muscles need to be at an optimal length in order to activate effectively. So all of those muscles, uh, bar the hamstrings, the IT band, which is worked on by tensor fascia lati and gluteus maximus, runs over the vastus lateralis muscle, this muscle right here. So to take the tension out, to take the slack out of the IT band, and it may it might depend on the position your pelvis is at, whether or not you need to remove slack, but to take the slack out of the IT band, you can activate vastus lateralis. While standing on one leg to practice hip control, the, you could first stabilize the shin and foot, then see if you could activate vastus lateralis, and then try rotating your hips in and out. You can do it slower if you like with control, or try it a little bit quicker as you get better at it. If you have knee problems, do work at this carefully, so slower would be better if you have any sort of knee, hip, or foot problems. Another muscle that I didn't mention, another long hip muscle, is the rectus femoris, which runs from just below the front of the hip crest to the knee. So that may also, because it attaches to a corner point of the pelvis, that too may be important in hip rotation, particularly when you're at the when you're not centered, when you're either side of center. But that muscle runs over the vastus medialis, or sorry, vastus intermedius. So to add tension to that muscle, to take out the slack of that muscle so that the rectus femoris is easier to activate, you could activate vastus 
intermediates as well and try that while turning your pelvis left and right. One other set of muscles, so sartorius and gracilis in particular, they both run over the adductors and possibly vastus medialis. So to take any slack out of those muscles, you can try activating the inner thigh and vastus medialis again while, and then turn your hips left and right. So I'd suggest experimenting with it while standing, practicing your internal and external hip rotation. Try with just vastus uh, with the lower leg stabilized. Try, try activating vastus la uh, lateralis, doing your hip turns. Try activating the, in, in the adductors and vastus medialis. Try activating um, intermedius. Try all of those exercises, see which one feels the best. You can also try activating all three vastus muscles as well as your shin and seeing how that feels while rotating your hips in and out. Something else you could try doing is with a le leg lifted without any weight, you can try rotating the thigh relative to the pelvis. So that's one way, again, you can work on both internal and external rotation. And just for fun, you could try activating the, those muscles again, lateralis, intermedius, medialis, as well as the adductors. Try turning your hips, try turning your thigh bone in and out to work on your rotation. Another thing you could do, try lifting the leg. So the hip is bent about 90 degrees can try activating those vastus muscles again. So when active with the knee lifted, keep your knee stiff. So prevent your knee from changing like that or like that. Keep your knee stiff, try activating those muscles. And then here again, you can try external rotation, internal rotation. Now while standing, an important note is that the foot was stable that provided you stability. So previously, while standing on one leg and working using the standing leg, your foot and shin, the idea was to stabilize those to provide, to give your muscles a firm end point. When the leg is lifted, you could try stabilize, making the foot rigid. So this is still rigid. So even though it's lifted, it's still rigid. Then try activating those muscles again, see how that feels. Uh, try activating the vastus muscles and then seeing how that feels. If you get some discomfort in the hip, you may need to focus instead on stabilizing the hip bone. So, in this case, so stabilizing the hip bone, you could try to make your spine long. If you could actually feel your hip bone, try to make it and make it feel stable. And then from there, activate your vastus muscles. Try rotating in or out. That one I haven't done so much work with. It requires a little bit more muscle control and body awareness, but what you may need to do is actually stabilize the thigh relative to the hip bone. So actually create some stability in the hip joint. So make your hip feel strong and stable, then try activating the vastus muscle, try rotating in or out, see if that feels comfortable on your hip. And generally when practicing muscle control, if I get any feeling of sort of like a little bit of discomfort, uh, more of a sharp, sharp pain where it feels like fibers are being, it's a little bit of a sharp pain um, that indicates to me that the muscles aren't working well together, like one muscle or one tendon is being overworked. So that's generally a sign that I haven't got stability where I need it. So if you get that sort of sensation, um, possibly means you need to work more on stabilizing one end of your hip muscles. But just continuing with this idea of stability. So if you're lifting one leg, you do have the other side which you could stabilize. So you could stabilize this hip bone because the sacrum joins the two 
how the two hip bones, so the two SI joints connect the two hip bones. You may have to stabilize this hip, also stabilize this, uh, the two SI joints. And then, so sta stabilizing the SI joint in this case, you might need to make the SI joint and lumbar spine feel long so all those muscles activate. And then from there, activate the vastus muscles on this side, see how that feels. So there the idea is to stabilize this side, is to stabilize the pelvis by stabilizing your standing leg side and then trying that action, or if you like, that action. If you're interested more in learning how to turn these muscles on and off, so say the vastus muscles, or even the those other muscles, tensor fascia lati, glute maximus, sartorius gracilis, the hamstring muscles. I actually have been working on a program, a muscle control video, which you can download. I've included a link in the description box. So that goes through a series of very simple standing exercises to help you develop um, muscle control so that you can both feel your muscles and control them. So it helps you to develop the ability to better feel your body or proprioceive it as well as control it. Now the exercises are all standing, they're very basic, but it runs base it runs through more or less all of the exercises that I use or have used to help my students learn to better feel and control their body. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Namaste.